Hi, my name is Adrian William, and today's video is for all the candidates of Advanced Standing DDS program who are planning to apply to University of Indiana. I'm going to try to go through some points which I believe every candidate should consider while applying to their IDP program and why am I making a specific video for this university right now is because last year I did some thorough research on this school. I even visited them. I made some friends up there. I was in constant communication with their office. So I was able to learn a few things about them. And along with that, I believe uh, this was the only school where I got interviewed and I got rejected. So I believe it's much more closer to my heart now. And I'm going to try my best sharing the information that I have. Starting off with University of Indiana, it's in Midwest, it's in Indiana. So the nature of uh, the whole atmosphere or the culture of the area is quite much more slower as compared to East and West Coast. Coast, And that's one of the reason if you try to communicate with their office, it's I believe very prompt in replying you back. I was amazed like whenever you email them, they will get back to you really fast, which is a really good thing. And just to give you a generic overview, approximately 250, 56 people apply there every year. Why? Because this school requires people either to be a citizen green card holder or hold a valid uh, visa inside US. So they don't offer F1 visas or I-20s to international students. Uh, invalid visas, most probably asylees, uh, eat for visa holders and some other visas uh, fall into this category. But in order to confirm before applying, I would encourage you to email their office and make sure that you fall into that category. I, I wouldn't suggest wasting your money and I would say prepare your knowledge or have background homework done before you apply. So coming to uh, the number of candidates that apply is 256. They usually interview about 75 people. Uh, the number of seats they had in the past was about 15 candidates that they admit out of the 75 people. Uh, average age that they take is approximately 30, but I don't believe that really matters a lot. And one of the most important thing to remember if you're planning to apply is their deadline is May 4th. So you want to get all of your things assembled and applied as early as possible. That's one of the most important thing. Overall in this whole uh, process, apply as early as possible. Few of the things that make Indiana a bit more distinct from rest of the schools is that they, this is the only school which requires 100 hours of shadowing experience either in US or Canada from the candidates. So you need to send them a proof of letter or a proof of letter from the clinic or from the doctor that you have shadowed for at least 100 hours in US or Canada. And along with that, they also require CE courses of uh, 20 hours that you have done in the past one year. So in the past 12 months, you should have done 20 hours of CE courses. And if you haven't done, you can, my suggestion would be do online ones because they even accept that, especially during COVID. You can go on to Colgate's website or there are some other online websites which offer free CE courses. You can take those and fulfill those 20 hours of CE courses. Along with other requirements, they need people with National Board Part 1 and Part 2, both of them, or INBD. They require your C EC evaluation, TOEFL, and they actually take two LORs of yours from the CAPEM. So they don't, they don't require three LORs, letter of recommendation. They require two, and out of those two, both of them should be from people that you have worked with in the past one year. So it's not like you worked two years ago and now you're getting that letter. It should be from people that you have worked in the past one year, in the past 12 months. One should be a practitioner, 
that you have worked with in in US or Canada. He should be testifying or uh, giving evaluation of your as a as a referee of yours. And secondly, from a person with whom that you have done non-profit community work, community work with a non-profit organization. So this could be a program in charge of, uh, for example, I worked with Mission of Mercy, so it was from the director of Mission of Mercy. It could be a homeless shelter. It could be ESO classes. It could be dental or non-dental, any kind of community work, which was non-paid and which was with a non-profit organization. So if you were volunteering with a dental clinic, which was not a non-profit, that's not community work. Community work is with non-profits. It could be a library, it could be a church, it could be a religious organization, it could be any place but non-profit. And I'm emphasizing on this because people think if you volunteer with a clinic, you're doing community work. That's not community work. Okay, so keeping this in, in, in your consideration that your letter of recommendation should be not any uh, older than 12 months. Along with that, this school requires a candidate to give Casper test. I think Tempo, uh, Diana and UCLA requires Casper test. But UCLA, uh, I think is optional. So, but Tempo and Indiana definitely need you to give Casper test. And if you haven't registered for Casper test, uh, I think one is going to be taking place on April 2nd and the other is May 4th. If you're applying to University of Indiana, you want to register for it right away. And I'm going to try talking about Casper test because I did give it last year when I was applying to uh, this school. Other things that you need to remember about this school is that they are big on outreach. If you go and look at their website, overall their approach, they 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 like to do a lot of community dentistry, community work. They have programs that work with Amish community, with veterans. They have similar to Mission of Mercy, Seal Indiana, and other Tooth Scout, which works with elementary school. So that's something you want to research on. And if you're if you're a person who have done a lot of community work and likes to work with nonprofit, I think this will be a good school to apply to. Along with that, my other advice is apply as early as possible. Uh, keep everything aligned. Make sure you provide the shadowing experience, the CE courses. Stay in communication with the school. Email them. If they are doing a virtual uh, tour, take that. Show them that you're somebody who's interested in them. Now I'm gonna uh, also tell you that there are some questions they ask you in the in the CAPID application. They ask you if you applied last year or in the previous year, which year did you apply and if you got interviewed or not. That's something they wanna know. And now I'm gonna try telling you a little bit about the CASPER. So the CASPER test is, I believe every candidate, if even if you're not gonna apply to Indiana, I think you still should uh, give CASPER at one point or another. Why am I saying? Because uh, University of Minnesota make you do something like it's MMI, something similar to CASPER. Uh, University, USC actually, their interview was quite similar to CASPER because what they do is uh, they have portal systems which which interview online. So let me tell you. Casper works in this way that they show you 12 questions. In those 12 questions, they will write a question in front of you and they will ask you to record your answer. And USC did the same. So there were questions like, if somebody comes to, uh, comes to the school lab in his PJs, pajamas, and who's underdressed, what would be your suggestion for this person? Record your answer within one minute. So they give you some time to prepare your answer mentally and then they ask you to record yourself in front of the camera. And that's something exactly what Casper does. It gives you 12 scenarios uh, to prepare. Some 
have to be answered by typing so you have to type in your answer let me give you an example that i remember so first of all there was a question where they asked uh, there are two candidates one of them uh, is talking to the other one and he says that my professor uh, whom I, whom i'm working as a research assistant whom with with whom i'm working as a research assistant actually cited my research in his paper but never wrote my name on it so he used his research but never cited his name and he was angry and then they ask you what would be your advice to that person so you have to type in under or record like my advice to this person would be this 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 and a uh, question next to it was if that person has already signed a waiver with that professor that his work is not legally bound to be cited or his name is not legally bound to be cited in that research paper what will be your suggestion now so the way it is working they will give you a situation which is a bit complex and you answer it in casper and there's no right and wrong but they want to see your emotional intelligence how you deal with a critical situation if somebody's stealing in your office what will be your approach so my suggestion is always look at the look at both sides of the coin you should be aware don't jump to conclusion one of the things in us for any interview or for any casper test never jump on to conclusions always say that i will research and i will also look on the other side of the coin and that's a mindset they are that they are looking for they don't want people who will say if i see something wrong happening i will just go and punish people no that's not the right way that's not the very ideal um, attitude towards solving problem but there's no ultimately right or wrong in this but you need to show that you are a very flexible person and you can look on both side of the situation before reacting or being conclusive of the situation so overall casper kind of makes you they judge you over your uh, emotional intelligence but you need to be fast with your typing and you should be well aware that i need to think within a minute or 3 minute and then i have to record myself in front of the camera so you have to be comfortable and that process has to be done in a in a in a fast manner i presume so these are some of the things i believe you should consider if you are applying to university of indiana the program is 30 months long and uh, i believe it's a good school because they integrate you with the local ds candidates and they aren't many international mostly like they're approximately 15 are international idb students and you sit with the local ds students so they integrate you into the program so that's also a very good thing because then you get to see the more american sides of things because in future you're going to be competing and you will be working with these folks outside of your school so that's one of the good thing about the school and i will encourage you if you could fulfill all of these uh, requirements apply for this school it's a good school and i wish you all the best and hopefully i will get back to you in more meaningful videos all the best Thank <laughs> you.